okay guys let's get to our simple task again and I don't want to look at today we're looking at well three basic functions I think we're winding up with the functions and all we only have if with simple if functions and then well if functions are going to take a while because there are several different ways to write if functions that's our next video and then we also have VLOOKUP to look at and so on so let's get into this all right what if we want to do a simple sum function here but this one is a slightly different one all right this one works like this all right can you find my equal sign so it's a equal sum if open bracket and we want to sum all the numbers that are less in this range then you have b2 colon b10 and our argument is that we want to sum all numbers that are less than 20. We want to add up those numbers close the bracket what do you think we're going to get for the answer all right 16 the total of all the numbers that are less than 20 is 16 there's only one there so to prove this anymore let's go here and put let's say 15 16 and 15 31 so this sum function sum if is summing the numbers in b2 to b10 if they are less than 20 that's what the sum if function does count if is rather similar all right so let's go here all right and what shall we do now let's say count if b2 to b so now we have 25 there twice so good let us say let's just put 25 here 25 count if how many 25s do we have we have two so we're saying count if b2 to b10 has 25 we're counting the numbers that are 25 so it's one two easy as cheese now here's something that i oftentimes do which i find effective as a teacher i want to find out the amount of persons let's say it's a huge spreadsheet i want to find out the number of persons who got above 90. so what i do with that is rather simple let's say equal uh count if open bracket c2 colon c10 comma and i want to count all the persons i've got let's just say above nine let's say above 89 all right so i put greater than 89 close quotation close bracket and that's it so there are six persons that got above 89 let's look we have one two three four five six simple finished we can say we want to count them other times 100 has occurred so we can simply count 100 one time we can say we want to count for something else as well let's say we want to count for something else so let's see uh let's make this range a little bit more expansive now let's go a1 and let's go all the way over to d 10 and in this instance i want to count for something i want to count for score all right so we're counting, let's say we're counting, a, we're counting ages counting actually a word this time so ages only time ages occurred count one count one so some if function will count numbers it will also count um words or characters or any such thing it will also count based upon a condition how many persons got below a certain um our numbers below a certain amount or above or equal to a certain amount that's what the count if function does so let's move to the final one now rank so for score two we want to place these persons and see who came first second third fourth fifth or right, let's do yeah let's work with this one all right score two all right so let's say we work with this one right equal rank that's how this function works open bracket we're looking for this number and then we want to see how it stacks up against its peers so we highlight the same range but make it absolute uh, let me let me let me work let me get rid of the absolute first so show you what happens so i have d2 colon d10 all right so i'm just checking to see where does 71 stack up so you score 71 on an exam and they are the scores you want to find out how were you placed on the exam so we this now so far is ninth 
But when you pull this down, what realize we're getting some weird stuff afterward. All right, double click here. See, move this, moving this range again, moving the range. Gone all the way to D17. So what we have to do is to make the range we're comparing it against absolute. So what we do is to make sure we put a dollar sign here in front of the column label and the row number. So in front of the letter again, which is the column label and the row number. In other words, when we copy the formula down, do not move from column D and row two in the first instance. And again, don't move from the ending range D10. All right, so it's anchored there. So when we pull and when we pull this down now, we get a good feel of who came first, second, third, fourth. So the person got got 100 came first, 99 came second. The person got got, got third got 98 percent. Um, the person got got fourth, um, 97 percent, and you get the feel of this going all the way through. All right, that's how it works. All right, these two persons this one got 98 percent, 96 percent. Let me see. Let me see, um, 98, anybody got the same percent, 99, let me give somebody the same percent here, let me see, 98. Alright, so here's a tricky thing now, this person got 98, this person got 98 and they both came third. Remember, person that came first got 100%, person that came second got 98%. The persons that got third or earned a third place got 98%, they both came third. Notice the next score, 97, came fifth. All right, because that's how placement works. So there's no fourth place. All right, the fact is, two persons got 98%, so you just jump over fourth and move to fifth. All right, and continue on. That is how placement works when you're placing persons or ranking them. You know, stat statisticians will tell you that there's a difference between ranking and placing. And there is some truth to that, but at this level, we are just concerned with what we're doing here. We are ranking, and this is how the formula is written. You look at the number that you want to compare, comma, and among its peers. So the peer, the, its peers are score one, 70, 70, score, sorry, sorry, score two, 78%, is being compared to other score twos which range from D2 to D10, all right? And that's how it works. So you can find out where the person was placed. And that is how it goes. Those are some simple functions. Now guys, I teach you these, but of course I can't teach you every scenario in which these functions will work. You have to have an idea what the function is, what it does, have an idea how to use it. So when you need it, you know which function to use. All right, and I can't give you every scenario ever in the world. That 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 be something like that's God level knowledge. All right, which I obviously don't have. All right, so that is how it is, guys. I give an idea the functions, practice them, and remember, you have to know what each function does, so you can know how to use it, when to use it. Remember, as I said earlier, if you know what when it comes to IT in other subjects to math included. If you know what, it makes sense, you know how, and you know why. So you can defend your answer. It kind of completes or accelerates you to a mastery level where you know your content. If all you know is what, but you don't know why or you don't know how, it means you really do. Then you don't know. All right. So you have to look at these functions and work them through and practice. That's the only way it's going to work for you, young people. Have a good day.